Now, before we talk about the order of operations, we need to define a couple of terms that will make this whole thing easier to talk about. An expression is any sequence of mathematical symbols that represents some number. So examples might include just the number 25. Um, or what we're most interested in right now is expressions with some arithmetic in them, like 3 plus 6 plus 8. All right, notice 3 plus 6 plus 8, that represents the number 17. So the word expression refers to sequences of mathematical symbols like this. Later on, we're going to encounter some more complicated sorts of expressions. To evaluate an expression means to work out what number the expression represents. So, for example, to evaluate the expression 3 times 7, we just work out that 3 times 7 equals 21. One more term that will be useful in discussing the order of operations. A sub-expression is any part of an expression that is by itself an expression. So for example, in the expression 3 times 5 plus 7, 3 times 5 is a sub-expression, 5 plus 7 is a sub-expression, but something like just 3 times by itself is not, because 3 times by itself, I can't work that out. That doesn't represent a number. The reason I'm introducing these terms is that it's going to make it easier to talk about the order of operations. All right, what is this thing we're going to talk about called the order of operations? The order of operations is a rule that tells us in an expression containing multiple operations, which sub-expression to evaluate first. Why is this important? Well, consider the expression 3 times 5 plus 7. If we evaluate 3 times 5 first, well, 3 times 5 plus 7 Evaluate 3 times 5, that's 15, and then evaluate our new expression, 15 plus 7, that's 22. On the other hand, if we were to evaluate 5 plus 7 first, 5 plus 7 is 12, evaluate 3 times 12, that's 36. But obviously, 22 and 36 are different. Which one does 3 times 5 plus 7 represent? Right, because I said an expression represents a number. 3 times 5 plus 7 represents just one number every time I write it down. Which one is it? Well, it turns out we choose the first option, which means we choose not to use that second one. Now, the good news is if you really mean add 5 and 7, then multiply the result by 3, there is a way that you can write that. You just need to write something to show that that's what you mean. So here's the order of operations. As we're deciding which sub-expression to evaluate, we look through and we say, do I see any sub-expressions including exponents? If you see a sub-expression 
where the operation is an exponent, evaluate that first. Then we want to evaluate multiplication and division from left to right. So that means find the leftmost sub-expression that contains multiplication or division as its operation and evaluate that first. If there is no multiplication or division, then we want addition and subtraction from left to right. So that means find the leftmost sub-expression with addition or subtraction and evaluate that. Okay, so here's the question. What if that's not what we want? What if we want to add 5 plus 7 and then multiply the result of that by 3? Well, we use grouping symbols. The very first thing we look for is what are called grouping symbols. The most common example is parentheses. Sometimes we'll use different shaped brackets to make it easier to tell them apart. What a grouping symbol does is it says, don't follow the usual order. Do this first instead. So we would write three times five plus seven. Those parentheses mean, I know the rules say multiply first, but ignore that. You really want to add 5 plus 7 first in this problem. Keeping track of those grouping symbols ends up being extremely important when we're doing algebra. You might look at most of these sort of order of operations problems that we have you practice and say, why would anyone ever write that expression? Why not just go through when you're solving a real life problem? Why not just go through and solve it one step at a time? And the answer is, of course, yeah, you can do that when you're just doing arithmetic. What we really need this work with order of operations and grouping symbols for is to help us keep track of the rules when we're writing down something more general using algebra. So, rather than show you an example of working through an order of operations problem, which you've probably seen, I'm going to show you an example where we need to provide the grouping symbols. Let's take this expression and add grouping symbols so that the addition happens before the division and the exponent applies last. Right? right now, if we were to follow the order of operations, we would first take 3 to the 4th, then do the division, and then add. That's not what we want. We want the addition to happen before the division. So I'm going to put that addition in parentheses so that that happens before the division. And we also want the exponent to apply last. So that means we want the whole rest of the expression inside a grouping symbol and the exponent outside. The key to order of operations is knowing what the order of operations tells you will happen if you don't do anything about it so that you know when you need to include these grouping symbols in order to get the order that you intend.